Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me, I have Vicky Nee. Uh, Vicky helps clients navigate through the human, emotional, and sometimes irrational stuff that you need to work through so that you can be the best you. She likes to coach with methods that are helpful, practical, and simple to implement, and her training includes things like life, business, mindset, transformation, and cognitive behavioral therapy. How did I do with that? Very well. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> awesome. Um, Vicki, thank you so much for making time to chat with me here and welcome to The Remarkable Coach. Well, thank you for inviting me back. Yeah, absolutely. So for our viewers and listeners that may not know, we actually, Vicki and I recorded an episode ah, maybe a year and a half ago, give or take. You know what? It's so hard to tell because yeah. I'd have to look at my diary, but it was at least a year ago. It was a minute ago. Yeah, it was yeah, a minute. I mean, ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and and it, it there there was just some some issues in the podcast, and it ended up being something that we decided not to publish. Um, so I I had the opportunity to connect with Vicky again and invited her back. So we're gonna try it again, and here we go. <laughs> Twice, is, second time is the charm. There you go. Second time's the charm. Um, yeah. So Vicky, with the with this podcast, I like to open it up by simply inviting our guest to tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words and why you do what you do. Okay. Well, basically, I I do what I do because I'm I'm kind of addicted to working with people and helping people through their issues. Um, I'm I'm kind of the person that. I've always been this way, you know, if I'm in the hardware store and somebody is having trouble finding something, I'll help them. I'll go off and I'll become a hardware store staff or, you know, or <laughs> I butt in and and just provide my my assistance wherever I see it's needed. Hello. But um, but the coaching is is uh, it's a personal item for me because I do see today uh, more and more people really need that ally. They really need that expertise of having somebody kind of stand and walk next to them who is trained to ask the questions, to stay um, impartial, right? Mm -hmm. And stay unbiased in the outcome and to offer the best, best uh, reflective um, questioning that is possible. So I've invested quite a bit in my training to teach me how to do that because it's there's a there's a real knack to it and it doesn't come naturally for me. So I enjoyed learning it and I enjoy practicing it and I see the benefit of it and that's what keeps me going. Yes. I love it. Um, the you mentioned just helping out random people at stores, and that <laughs> reminded me of in my in my twenties, um, I I owned an art gallery and kind of hung out in the art scene in in Portland quite a bit. And there was this ridiculous meme that was floating around, um, and and it said I remember it, it was it was a picture of of an owl with a cigarette hanging out of its mouth. And it said, walks into art store. No, I don't work here, but yes, I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and I, uh, at one point, I think maybe I had that as like my profile photo on, on Facebook or something like that, because it was just, it made me laugh. And it was like, I was like, yep, that's me. <laughs> that's you. So you do the same thing then? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I don't work uh, do you, here. Are you an artist? <clears throat> Uh, photographer, photographer. Oh, okay. Former. Former photographer. Year, years ago. <laughs> it's, been uh, it's been a minute. So you did fine art photography is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 The real money, money. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's how I made my millions of pennies. <laughs> really, millions of pennies. I, I actually, that's my background. I, I have um, a lot of friends in Alberta. Uh, who who are photographers and oh, right I ac actually used to have a a photo studio. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. So very cool. Yeah, yeah I used to. Uh, I I had a, a converted closet dark room with a you know oh, yeah. 
35 millimeter medium format. I would print everything myself. It was, yeah, it was, it was a lot did of fun. You, did you do color as well as black and white or just black and Every, white? Everything, yeah. Everything, okay. Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, I we digress. Well, we could be talking about this all day. <laughs> I'm not um, the photographer. My my, uh, my ex was the is the photographer. Okay. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> circle back to coaching. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's. Who tell us? Tell us who who are your typical clients now? Who who do you who do you work with? Well, it's 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 really funny because typically my clients because I took a look at this just the other day because I wanted to, you know, I was curious. I'm going, who am I working with? And because they they really have a broad demographic, but there is a common common thread going through them. And typically they are very uh, interested in self-improvement um, mm-hmm. and, and self-awareness. They, they, being in touch with their with their own who they are is very important to them. They uh, they have high degree of integrity. I mean, I just got the best clients in the world. I think, right? Yeah. I mean, they um, they they are striving and they they are trying. They're tired of doing it by themselves, mm-hmm. right? And not that everybody needs to do it by themselves, because a lot of people have got support from friends and family. Mm-hmm. And I always caution people with that because friends and family can also, they've got, they've got skin in the game when they're helping you, when they're listening to your problems and when they're, you know, so, I mean, if, are you going to talk to your buddy if you've got problems at work, if he's, you know, like, you know, like, they will give you the best advice they can, but usually there's a bias. They have an outcome that sure is helpful to them and not to you. And I do believe that everybody everybody does have the capacity to coach themselves. Mm-hmm. So that's the other thing I do is I, I teach people strategies that they can use over and over and over again in different situations. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so that they're not kind of a uh, yeah, client for life. Mm-hmm. They are self-sufficient. They they can recognize, you know, when, when they can do it or they can, you know, try to do it on their own. And if they need to, they can connect with me or if they want to connect with somebody different, mm-hmm. they can do that. I mean, it might be like a, a health issue or an exercise issue. And clearly that's not me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> but if they, so so yeah it it uh these people are all smart they're self-aware they're responsible and all in their own way but um but they they have recognized that they they need a little bit of help from some somebody who knows how to guide them yeah. and how to how to uh kind of walk with them and hopefully you know i mean i i encourage people to find somebody to help them you know and uh, yeah and sometimes I, I think you know talking to you know a buddy or a spouse or even a smart uncle or aunt <laughs> um it can sometimes just not be enough right it, you, it helps especially for someone who's very close to you. Um, I think it helps to, well, let me rephrase that. I think someone that is very close to you, as you said, can have a bias, right? Because they're involved and they're not- Whether they know it or not. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, I don't know, you know, whether or not they're giving advice that benefits themselves um, might, might be debatable in, in a given situation and I think that if they're close enough to you, you know, they are not going to be able to come at your problems with a fresh set of eyes and a fresh pair of ears, right? And that's what 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 happens to a lot of people. Um, Either they're hanging out with people that they've known since they were in kindergarten. And that 
persona that they're carrying with them, that mindset that who they are, their identity is not the healthiest. It's not the best way. It's not the one that's going to get them to success. It's not the one that's going to get them to happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be remembered or labeled by friends and family that have known them forever, you know, as, you know, the goofy kid or as, you know, the lazy kid or as the trouble kid or as, you know, like some, with some sort of negative connotation. And people do this without even really realizing that how harmful it is and how, how hurtful it is, but they will perpetuate that, that um, label mm -hmm. for that person. And so how are you going to grow? How are you going to break out of that negative mindset, that, that unhelpful belief that you are not worthy, that you're not the one that can, can you know, do this? Mm -hmm. if that's all you're hearing right and also the other opposite end of the spectrum is you know this is especially true with with family you know or spouses and that they want to be supportive they want to be helpful they want to make you know they don't want to say anything negative to you right and so if you've got a really crappy idea right <laughs> You know, they're not going to tell you it's a crappy idea. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you it's a crappy idea, but I have learned ways of bringing you to that realization on your own. Uh -huh. And, and you know, you might still look at that idea and say, you know what? Yeah, it might be looked at as crappy, but I think I still want to do it. Sure. Well, okay, let's get a plan to make this the least crappy, crappy idea. that you could, Right? Oh, so, Vicky, that's savage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, you know, but, but there's, you gotta work, you gotta figure out how to make it through all of that swamp water. Yeah. How would you, how do you, so how do you categorize yourself? Are you a life coach? Business coach? You know, I, I have a confession to make. Any time you go to my LinkedIn profile, you are probably going to see a different type of coaching list in there. I have a life coach, a business coach, a clarity coach, a mindset coach. A, um, and like I say, you know, uh, I help people with limiting beliefs, with, mm -hmm. with uh, working their, their sense through that. So, um, but but you know what? It's it's a holistic approach that I feel like I'm taking because all of those components will make up one full person. Sure. So so you know I I don't I've, I have not been able to figure out how to work with this sliver of a person while ignoring the rest of them. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, completely. Yeah. Okay. And, and honestly, like it's kind of so on this on this podcast in particular, it's been kind of a running joke that every, you know, executive leadership coach that works with the most the highest paid CEOs in existence, they're secretly life coaches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, how do you separate your life from your business? Right, exactly. Yeah. And then especially if you're at a high level. Yeah. Um of, of, uh, of uh, you know, ex executive function in your, you know, uh, those are the guys, they don't need me to teach them how to uh, create a strategy to, you know, make more sales or do more marketing or, you know, HR, whatever. Mm -hmm. They need help in the interpersonal relationship that they're having with themselves. Mm -hmm. Right, because that voice inside of their head is the loudest one, that is the most negative one, that's the most critical one, right? And because it's the one that is bringing all of the memories of, you know, the childhood taunting, the, you know, the the lack, the the um, I guess they, what what would what, uh, the term be? The 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 gap, you know, the stuff that's missing. Yeah, um, you know, from a person's personality or character, and none of it is missing. None of it is bad, right? It's just our belief and how we see it. And so, 
when I, now I've never ever considered myself an executive coach because I, I really haven't gone after the market. But if you're an executive and you want to give me a try, I'm happy to give it a, <laughs> a whirl. But it's, it's important for people to understand that the more important thing is to to have empathy, to have in some some uh, clarity of of what that person is saying, what they're going through, how they're what they're what they're aiming towards, so that they can affect the right change in their life, so that they can kind of reach their potential. So I get, whether so I get, they're or not, yeah. Uh, Vicki, where do you get your, where do you get your clients? How do you market yourself today? Oh, well, badly. Um, I, <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm like the whole, the whole gang of, of, of coaches out there that is like, uh, hire me. No. Um, I don't know. Like referrals is, is mostly where I get it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and just through conversations and, you know, somebody maybe follows my, one of my social medias, which I hope to be, I'm going to start a podcast. There you go. Yeah, actually I've been working on that and it's, it's a uh, watch for it coming out in, um, in the s summer. Yeah. Uh, it's good. It should be all, all ready to go. So it's uh title is, you know, do a search for rants from a short broad. What is it called? Rants from a short broad. I love it. <laughs> and it's just going to be very eclectic, very short snippets uh -huh. of of audio of just me sharing my thoughts, sharing yeah. my ideas, my, you know, like something's happened in the news. I might have something to say about it. I hear some good music. I might want to share it. Yeah. I'm, you know, like just just kind of like, who knows what is going to come in through this mode, yeah. right? But I, I, just, I just want to have fun with it. I really do. And I also hope that as I'm going through it and finding my my audience and my voice, um, I'm hoping I will be helping them to get whatever it is that they want to get out of it. You know, so it's going to be a very experimental process for me because it's going to be a um, contribution from both sides, from the listener and from me, right? So I don't know, it might go nowhere. I might decide I hate it. I don't have a clue. Give it a try, not gonna hurt. Uh, yeah. yeah, if nothing else, I'll just have you know a little bit of fun with it and uh, find out how I like it. <laughs> I love it. When's the, uh, when's the, have you launched already or is that coming? No, I haven't launched already, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm still going to do the, you know, finalize the, the intro editing and, you know, the, all, all of that kind of stickly part, you know, yep. and I'd like to get about um, nine or 10 episodes in the can before I, before I drop it. So, yeah. but I'm, I'm aiming for summer. So it'll be good summer listening, you know, when you're driving to the beach. Nice. Right. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's great. So we sh we do uh, at Boxer, we do, we call it podcast logistics. So we, 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 oh, we do a okay. lot of that. Well, we'll pro have to have another little chat. Yeah. Yeah. Pro, pro tip for you. If you're getting 10, 10 episodes in the can is smart. When you release, 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 start out with like five episodes. Release oh, five okay. episodes all at once. At the same time? Okay. At the, yeah. Right when you, right when you start. And yeah, because you let people have listen to more than one, right? They yeah. don't have to. Yeah, and it will, it'll give you a little boost in the in the algorithm. So if people subscribe, they'll be downloading. Hopefully, right? They'll be downloading the first five episodes to check those out. So perfect, then you'll perfect. In, yeah. in, 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 I, I, in not iTunes, in Apple Music or po Apple Podcast, Google Play, it'll show that you've got you know five downloads instead of just one because you got five episodes up there. Right, 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 right. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. And and I think that, you know, with the with the prevalence of, you know, Netflix and, and Prime and, and all of these streaming services, our consumption, our media consumption has really veered towards the um, binge, mm -hmm. you know, mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we find something that we want to listen to, where 
typically going to either watch more than one episode or sure. listen to more than one, you know. So, and we're just getting kind of rewired that way. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And so, and that's also part of, part of what I, what I help people with is, you know, um, I do a little bit of business coaching, you know, for small business. Mm-hmm. And uh, because I, I just love business, you know, when I was in Calgary, I, I had a number of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and trust me, you don't want to make that many mistakes and, and let them go to waste, not use the expertise that you've got <laughs> from, from all, the, all the, the things that you've done wrong. Um, <laughs> I know it's making me sound really bad, but, but, but no, I'm still here and I'm still kicking and I'm still still around. So I think I consider myself a success. I and think, I think most people listening to this podcast are <clears throat> of the mindset that if you're not, you know, if you're not failing somewhere, you're not learning anything. I mean, you can learn from successes to an extent, but you certainly learn more. Not from- much. Yeah, you learn. You a don't lot. know what you did. You didn't know what you did to make it a success, whereas yeah. it's often very easy to identify what you did wrong yeah it's a lot it's clear it's much more clear yeah now i mean you could you know if you if you know if you've done it over and over and over again so you know what you're supposed to do and you know that you did it all right that's a different thing right but you know and and i do exaggerate a little bit for for you know some humor to <laughs> <laughs> Sure. But, but yeah, no, it's, it's, um, that's, that's sort of the other thing that I can add to, to my little, you know, kind of ranting podcast, right, is, you know, I, I, I pay attention to current affairs and, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, business, so, I think business tips or any kind of, you know, advice and stuff that pops into your head, it'd be good to. Just record well, real quick. Keep your phone handy and record it into your phone and turn ab- it into a podcast. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But one of the things that one of the things I see people doing a lot of, as far as business goes, that I, I, I it makes me question, is they're they're very quick to accept the norms and the the um, kind of the rules of the road for a particular business and and you know for for small business right so well no no we, this is this is we've always used this thing for that and so okay. this is what we're going to use for that we've done it this way it's this long we don't want to break any of the rules right because that's how we fail mm-hmm. but i i see that my observance has been that people who are disruptive in the marketplace Mm-hmm. Are the ones that win the biggest they also sure. take the biggest risk you know they might fail the biggest too but i mean unless you're doing something really stupid that's probably not going to happen yeah it's cal- it's about the calculated risk yes yeah yeah that's right yeah. you know so so i mean and and different people can can have us have a different tolerance towards risk you know so if they've already had a certain high level of success they can they can they can you know, wage rough waters a little bit easier and survive rather than, you know, uh, somebody who's just starting out, you know, maybe, um, you know, a little unsure of themselves, not, you know, not much backing or whatever, but, but that's, um, that, that's not a lot of fun. <laughs> it's gotta be an adventure. <laughs> oh my. What, uh, what sort of things do you, you struggle with as as a coach? I struggle with hmm. There's so many. Um, no. <laughs> no, I struggle I struggle the most I think with sales. Okay. Yeah. You know, just making a sales call, making, you know, doing that, doing that, that outreach, that call, because mm-hmm. um, I, I truly am of the mind that I would do this kind of work for nothing. 
mm -hmm. if I didn't have to pay the bills, right? Sure. I really would. I mean, that's I'm so much I believe in it and 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 love it, and and also, um, but but I am slowly learning at about time that that if I don't if I don't charge if I don't make the sales that I'm no good to anybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really people aren't going to value yeah. what I offer if there's not a price tag attached so to it. That's a great, that's a great point. That second part too. So, well, first of all, yeah, if you're not, if you're not making the sale, you're not helping the person, right? So by making the sale, you're helping someone. And number two, so there is, <clears throat> there's a famous study, famous in marketing circles. Mm -hmm. that I believe was written about in your countryman's book, uh, Robert Cialdini, who's Canadian. Um, mm -hmm. And he uh, wrote the book Influence. And I think this is where I first read this. And what he talks about in this, this, this study is that you, you get, the, there, there's three glasses of wine, one labeled inexpensive, one labeled mid-priced, and one labeled expensive. And they do the taste test. You know, you might know this, you know where this is going. Yeah. They, they, they taste it all and, and, and people rated the wine as you might expect, right? The, the expensive wine, expensive. people thought it was really good. This is, this is delicious, right? The mid-priced wine, people thought it was all right. And the low-priced wine, people thought it was just so-so. Of course, the big reveal, the man behind the curtain, all three glasses were the same damn wine. <laughs> yep. um, and so there is, there, there is like psychological perceived value in high prices, you know, it, it, right. Louis Vuitton purses, a coach, coach purses, stuff like that. Right. It's yeah. no different than a, than a bag, a, a handbag or a shoulder bag that you might get at target, but people That's will right. pay thousands of dollars for it because of the, because, because of the, Brand the, that's the exclusivity. Yeah. yeah, the exclusivity. Like not everyone can get this fancy stuff, so it, it makes me feel better about having it, about drinking that expensive wine. People are so people tie their identity with external things on a, on a, on I, all the time, and especially if well, I'm not especially, but but if if material things are important to you if status is important to you then you are going to seek status and status is going to bullshit you hmm. um it's going to trick you into into doing something or believing something that is not true typically hmm. about yourself right so so um if status is important then you're going to say in your mind, I'm not, you know, I'm not talking out loud. I'm just talking about in your mind. You might tell yourself, if I act like I'm really rich and I have this, these, these things to, to prop that up, then I will appear to be rich and successful. And then people wonder, where imposter syndrome comes from which is you know manifests itself in many different ways so you know there's not just the one you know a manifestation of it but there's many different uh, ways that it appears in people's lives and um so i mean that's a whole other show yeah but yeah. um but it's just little things like that and now i'm not saying don't buy the you know, Gucci bag or, you know, like the, the Coco Chanel perfume or that, you know, I'm, all I'm saying is, is that understand that you are not that thing. That thing sure. is not you. Right. And so to, you know, if, if you don't have that thing, like, you know, if you go through a rough spot, you know, financially, for example, and you need to cut back, that does not impact, that does not make you a lesser person. Mm -hmm. That simply means that you've got the the smarts and the wherewithal to recognize that danger and to do something about it in the right time. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Yeah, I mean, and there's, you know, at the same time, it's a, it's a delicate line, right? You don't want nobody, oh, yeah. whether, whether you're, you know, getting something fancy from Coco Chanel or, you know, something at, at, at you know, Kroger's or, or whatever. Um, yeah. You don't want to let your stuff define you, right? Like, you, you know, um, you can't take it with you. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> well, I mean, and at the same uh, time, and at the same time, I think I would, you know, I would encourage business owners and coaches, and perhaps yourself, to consider the idea that perhaps raising your prices might benefit your clients and customers even more. Yeah, than helping absolutely. them for free because they're going to take what you say. If if you're you know if you're if you if you charge someone ten dollars and give them a piece of advice they're gonna they're gonna in the back of their head your advice is worth ten dollars if you charge yeah. someone a hundred thousand dollars and give them a piece of advice you that better same you, advice dude you better bet they're gonna take that advice very seriously because absolutely. it cost them a hundred bucks or a hundred thousand dollars yeah yeah absolutely absolutely it it really it it and that's that's also where the mindset comes from. So it's, you know, nothing is, nothing is um, set in stone as far as, you know, like, or a hundred percent, you know, everything is, you know, you've got to take it all with a grain of salt and, and put it in perspective, put it in, in relationship to, with, with the rest of what you're doing, what you're about and, and, and how you're, you're living. So if you're, if you're um, creating this this situation where you are looking to you, you you're looking to be something that you're not, mm -hmm. then number one, you know it. Number two, uh, people that know you know it. It, it just it just it's just so unhealthy and this is one of the reasons why you know like my concern for the for the very young population for the youth because you know they're growing up in a an in instagram kind of facebook type of you know um, celebrity you know like being a celebrity is now a job right and i yeah. don't know how fulfilling it is as a job or as a career, you know? Um, so, so that could be a study that gets done. I don't know, but uh, um, I, I see too many kids these days who, I mean, they, they're, they're afraid to make, you know, like make a phone call to, to an adult, you know, get their phone hooked up, you know? My, and, and, <laughs> my, my wife is a 35 year old millennial and she hates making phone calls. And she's 35. So yeah, that's a real thing. <laughs> it is a real thing. It it really, I, I mean, I, I sound flippant when I say it, but I, I'm not at all. Yeah. It's this is, this is high anxiety that, that people are suffering from uh -huh. to, because, because you see, they've, they've always had it done for them. Mm -hmm. You know, mom has always taken care of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've read, I've read situations where the mom goes to the dean's office with the college student, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and and basically, you know, overrides anything that that kid wants. Does not ask what do yeah. you want. Does not, you know, she's just, you know, she's going to be mama bear and she's going to make sure that she takes care of her her little cub. And the intentions are so. Um, loving and so so good mm -hmm. but the outcome is so disastrous and so so painful for the for the person it's happening to right yeah yeah taking away that independence well and taking away their independence and also communicating loud and clearly that you do not believe that they are capable no Right. So if you don't have to say it, you just have to not let them do anything. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, here, let me do the dishes because you don't know how. Right. Because, you know, they might not do it exactly like you do or, you know, like all of these 
That's a little behavioral things. So uh, real quick, you, you, so like yeah. you mentioned the dishes, like I'll let me do the dishes because you're not doing them right. I just read about that in a, in a book called The Gift of Failure. Um, and I think it's by Jessica really? Leahy, Gift of Failure. I'm going to check real quick here. I got to write that down. Yeah, and it's it's about it's a parenting book. Um, I'm reading it because we have a one year old girl now, um, and I'm trying to not screw her up. Good <laughs> for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, gift of failure: How the best parents learn and let go so their children can succeed by Jessica Leahy. Well, well, I'll make sure and throw a link to this book in the show notes. Um, oh, that would be great. A, yeah. It's a book on, on parenting and she talks specifically, she mentions about parents who will do things like, um, you know, they'll do the dishes because their kids don't, won't do it right. Or they'll do the laundry because their kids don't do it right. And, and when their kids do it, maybe mom comes in later and then refolds and it. And does it again. Right. That's like the worst thing that you can do because you're sending that message to the child that they didn't do it right, that they're, you know, in essentially that they're not good enough, right? Obviously that's not what the parent means, but that's the message that's coming across through the subconscious. And what, so the great thing about this book is that she offers uh, better ways to do this stuff, right? Like here's what you can do instead. Yeah. You know, here's what you can do to give your, your four-year-old equity in putting dishes away, right? Get them the step stool and, and, and help, let him help you put, or her, let the, let the kiddo help you put the, the dishes away. Let the kiddo help you do the laundry and let them do it in their own way. And, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I love that. I love that because this is, I see, I don't have children, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, you know, I don't feel like I can talk about parenting, but I, I, I do observe, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, parents and see the, the results to many of the kids. Right. And, you know, like when you get, when you get grown adults having a conversation with their three-year-old, that is that they're trying to use logic and let the kid make the decisions uh -huh. you know um the kid won't know what a good decision is if they don't experience it by you guiding them and by yeah. you making them for him to begin with right yeah. then they yeah. you know and then there's there's little decisions that they can make like do you want to wear your your green pants or your blue pants today you know uh -huh. like that's a decision you know that the kid can make but yeah. Not, you know, some of the big ones that I've seen. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I think, I mean, the, these these kinds of conversations in this book in particular, this book is 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 a parenting book and mm -hmm. these universal concepts, right? This this these these concepts can be taken to the workplace. They can be Absolutely. taken. They can be taken to the living room with a spouse. I mean, they're they're universal concepts for, you know, um, these for, these for tactics. Yeah, these tactics when they're if 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 somebody observes that any if if all they have to do is do something a little bit wrong mm -hmm. or not to your standards, and they will get out of ever having to do it again. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They are going to turn around and they're gonna manipulate the situation yeah. so that I mean you you end up doing everything, right? Yeah. Well, who wants to do that? Wrong. Like so. If you don't want to put up with, you know, the, um, unless they're folding your clothes, mm -hmm. right? Let them fold their clothes the way they want, right? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. But anyway, so that maybe I should uh, change my my focus on coaching to uh, parent, <laughs> no, to parents. <laughs> <laughs> my qualifications are having yeah, never my qualifications. Children, having never yeah. had children. <laughs> Never having, never having, having had children. That's right. Um, I have a cat. What, uh, Vicky? What three books do you recommend that all of your clients read? I'm so glad you asked. This is a passion of mine. But right off the top of my head, right now I'm reading a book called uh, "How to Do the Work." Huh? Who's and the author of that one? I know that. I, doctor, uh, uh, doctor, um, it's a uh, woman. Nick, uh, oh, how do you say Nicholas, but female name? Nicola? 
Nicola, Dr. Nicola. Yeah. Um, Nicole, and Nicole she's Lepera. a girl. Nicole LaPera. Yeah. Amazing book. Yep. Absolutely fantastic book. I've got so many notes in my, that's one book. I usually do an audio book or something like that because I, but this one, I had to get the hard copy, you know, okay. um, and it's just fantastic. And a classic that I really, really recommend to everybody is a uh, psycho cybernetics. That's a great one. Yeah. And uh, Maxwell Maltz. And so that's one of the very first, one of the original um self-help books mm -hmm. have you read it i have it's it's been a, a minute but yeah i've been read a, it yeah <laughs> and okay and then there's actually one that um probably not too many people have have heard of but it's it's let me grab it yeah I'm back. So, well, oh, here we go. Leadership and self deception. Okay. Yes. This is, it's, it's, an, it's, it's kind of like a, it's written in the um, storytelling style sure, sure. Of, sure. Of, of these books. Yeah. Right. But the the whole the whole thing that he's he's illustrating and doing a really good job in explaining and showing mm -hmm. is why do people after they make a commitment or make a promise or, or or enter into some sort of a situation where they've done that there is a resentment that happens mm -hmm. after a period of a certain period of time they turn around and they start becoming they start edging out of that commitment, that promise, that, you know, situation, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I've observed this many, many times, you know, just not even in my own relationships with other people, but in, you know, I'm looking out in a kind of a voyeuristic kind of fashion, but I, I, I see that type of situation where it's like, he told me that he was going to do blah, blah, blah. And now he's not doing it. He's making excuses and he's doing this and he's doing that. Mm -hmm. And just the, the, how we justify that stance, how we justify taking that, that position, that slide back in our own minds. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's just a little bit of, um, it, 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 I think it's quite valuable. Yeah. It opened my eyes a lot because it's like, holy smokes. Yes, that does happen. I do that. Right? <laughs> awesome. And so hopefully once you realize it, then you stop doing it. Awesome. Well, Vicki, where can our viewers and listeners connect with you online? Well, I have a website, vickini.com. Um, and I also am on LinkedIn and I'm on Facebook and, and it's, it's all just Vicky me. Awesome. And we'll, of course, uh, yeah, for those of you listening that are maybe not sitting directly in front of a computer, um, we'll have links to, to everything in the Perfect. show notes. I'll, uh, I'll send, send you everything. Yeah. I, I think, I, I, I think I, I may think still have it. it from our old, uh, our old no, documents. Nothing so. has changed. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> then we're all good. Um, yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Vicki, this has been a great conversation. I appreciate you uh, making time. I appreciate you inviting me back. <laughs> yeah, you bet. You bet. Um, yeah. So yeah, thank you for joining us on The Remarkable Coach. And thank you to our listeners and viewers for joining us again. And we'll see you guys next I hope, time. I hope they found it somewhat entertaining and enlightening. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below Comment. or... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're watching this on YouTube, let us know in the comments down below. I can't really comment on a podcast app. Like, follow, subscribe, all that, all that fun stuff. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Right. Thanks, everybody. Okay, bye, -bye. <laughs> bye, everybody.